a holiday devoted to eating, drinking, dancing and assorted pagan rituals. Swedish Midsummer is second only in significance to Christmas. This is a guide to making the most of it. First, buy everything in the starter kit. Remember, here everyone brings their own drinks. Make sure you get to the state-owned off-license in plenty of time, just in case you're whisked off to an island somewhere. This is downtown Stockholm on Midsummer's Eve. If you can't bear the silence or being on your own, stay away from the city. Midsummer is supposed to be celebrated in the countryside surrounded by birch trees, fields and water. The first thing you have to do is to make your own Midsummer garland. Avoid the kitchen at all costs. Some unfortunate soul always gets stuck scrubbing the potatoes. Then it's time for a fabulous lunch of pickled herring and new potatoes spiced with dill and chives. You drink beer and nube, Swedish vodka served ice cold in a shot glass. The nube must be consumed in the time-honored way. Always preceded with the nube visa, a short humorous song. We recommend two beers per nube. This will improve both your singing and your Swedish. No midsummer is complete without a sudden downpour. Fortunately, it usually stops as unexpectedly as it started. After lunch, it's time to raise the maypole, the ancient fertility symbol. Watch carefully and you should be able to work it out. The origins of Swedish midsummer are unclear. For a millennium, it's been a celebration of summer and a fertility rite. Human sacrifices are a thing of the past, but the revelers of today are just as passionate. Like many Swedish traditions, the why is less important than the how. Now the dancing begins. Everyone knows small Grudener, the little frogs. Locking your hands on your lower back and jumping like a frog may seem strange, but for at least one day of the year, it makes perfect sense to Swedes. It won't take long to master the dance steps. Swedes can do it in their sleep. And with a bit of practice, so will you. The humiliation by dance is mercifully short-lived, and you can count on your host to console you afterwards with a piece of strawberry cake. Next, it's time to get physical, which means tugs of war, horseshoe tossing, egg and spoon races, boot throwing or apple bobbing. Since everyone takes part, you don't have to be embarrassed should you make a fool of yourself. One note of caution, keep an eye on grandma. This sort of thing brings out her ruthless streak. All this strenuous exercise calls for some real food. Time for a barbecue. Since all Swedish men want to show off at the grill, this might be a good time to get to know some Swedish women. Anything can go on the grill. Meat, fish, vegetables or fruit. There's definitely room to experiment here. Once you've eaten, you either have a quiet night, a sauna, a swim, a few drinks, pause for reflection, or you hit the dance floor with new and old friends. Be sure to listen to some dance band music before midsummer, so you know what to expect. It takes a bit of getting used to. If you're lucky, there will be some ABBA too. Generally speaking, Swedes are somewhat reserved. Tonight is the exception. Midsummer Eve is a night for romance. If you don't find or already have a partner, pick seven different flowers, put them under your pillow, and according to legend, you will dream of the person you will marry. If you don't, you probably pick the wrong flowers. At midsummer, the sun never completely sets. This is the longest day of the year. From now on, it only gets darker. But there will be a baby boom to brighten up March.